Good day, my dear ones. This is one of those stunning days in the fall that we really glory in the splendor of God. You can see the red tree back there. I planted that earlier this year. I put that actually videoed that. Some of you remember that. So it's looking great along with all the other beautiful colors of this season. It reminds us just how good God is. And I hope that's what you're experiencing today. So I want to talk about something exciting that's just about to happen in the life of our congregation, St. Luke Lutheran Church. Sunday, November 1st, All Saints Sunday, we are coming back into in-person, inside worship for the first time since the spring. And we're so excited about that. And in order to make that a very safe environment, we have all kinds of safety protocols in place. We're going to ask people to make reservations so we can kind of control the number of people that are there to, so that we can remain physically separated from one another. And we're going to ask people, all people to wear face coverings throughout the whole service and other safety protocols. Now I want to talk about those and then teach a lesson using them. I don't know what your experience has been when you come up against some of these safety protocols that have been in place during this pandemic, like wearing face coverings and the like. Sometimes that could feel like a really imposition, right? Like you're really cramping my style. And I would imagine as we prepare for indoor worship, making a reservation, wearing face coverings, physically distance, all the rest, you know, might think like this kind of is imposing on me as a worshiper of God. I feel that same way. And yet it helps us to learn an important lesson of what it means to be an authentic follower of Jesus. And that is to live more for others than for ourselves. The primary reason that we follow these safety protocols, especially wearing a face covering, is for the sake of others. Wearing a face covering doesn't, isn't going to prevent you from getting the virus, but if you have it, it does a great job of you not spreading the virus to others. So it's more for others than for ourselves. One time, two followers of Jesus, two disciples, the brothers James and John, were, came to Jesus and they said, they asked Jesus that when he came into his kingdom, they want to sit on the right and the left, the two brothers, on the one on the right, one on the left, the positions of glory. And Jesus, I mentioned, he kind of chuckled. He says, you don't even know what you're asking here. And he went on to say, Seeking this kind of glory, seeking this kind of position, seeking this kind of privilege is not the way of following Jesus. And he said this to them as he concluded his teaching. He says, this is not the way it is with you or should be with us. Instead, whoever wants to become great must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus was teaching that the more we grow to have the mind of Christ to be like Jesus, the more we live for others and less for ourselves. He, he uses the word like we're, we're to be a servant, we're to be a slave. He puts himself into the equation. He says, even the Son of Man, that's a term Jesus used to describe himself. The term Son of Man means that Jesus is God. So there's no more significant being in the universe than God. No more powerful or being that's worthy of worship than God. And here is God in the flesh, Jesus saying, I've come not to be served, but to serve and to give my life away for others. So if we're going to be like Jesus, if we're going to follow him and, and live in his image, that's what it means. And during this time of this pandemic, when there's these restrictions that are put on us to safety protocols, this is such a wonderful opportunity for us to give witness that we are true followers of Jesus, that we're going to be more like Jesus. So every time you feel that kind of annoyance building up inside you, maybe anger, maybe it you feel like this is imposing on your freedoms. Every time you feel that building up inside of you, you say, this is an opportunity for me to shine the light of Jesus to others, that I can communicate to them that you matter to me, that I care about you even more than my comfortability or my freedoms, that I care more about you and your safety and your life. And this is a great witness to who Jesus wants us to be. Let this be an opportunity, dear ones, when we can have the mind of Christ. When life is going along well and smoothly, 
it's kind of easy to be a follower of Jesus. But when t times get tough, when, when we're under stress, when we're under restrictions, when we're under loss or disappointment, that's when we find out, do we really have the mind of Christ or not? Or do we revert back to our old selfish selves? Can we be that new person that Christ has made us to be, to live more for others than for ourselves? Have the mind of Christ today. Whenever you encounter someone else, shine forth your care for them in how you live. In this way, we give witness to who Jesus is. May that be encouragement to you today. Go out and enjoy the beautiful day that we have. Take care.